The end of the earth is upon us. Pretty soon, it'll all turn to dust. So get up! Get up! Get up! Forget the past. Go outside. Have a blast. 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 Go a million miles in a rocket plane. Go out of your mind. Go, go insane. insane. Go insane. To a place you've never been before. Eat ice cream or you will lick the floor. Because the end of the earth is upon us. Pretty soon, it'll all turn to dust. Goodbye, my friends. Goodbye, world. I'll see you in the I'll next life. You in the next life. In the next life. In the next life. The end of the earth is upon us. Pretty soon it'll all turn to dust. So the end of the earth is upon us. Forget the past. Pretty Go soon outside. it'll all turn to dust. So get out of miles in a jet airplane. Forget the past. Go, Go outside. Go have a blast. Go a thousand miles in a jet airplane. Go out of your mind. Go insane. To a place you've never the been before is upon us. Eat ice cream only the law or you'll lick the floor. The end of the earth is upon us. Goodbye, my friends. Pretty soon it'll all turn to dust. See you in the next life. Goodbye, my friends. Goodbye, world. The end of the earth is upon us. The end of the earth is upon us. The end of the earth is upon us. Pretty soon it'll all turn to dust. Mark? So get up! Forget the past. Go outside and have a blast. This one's more aggro or just kind of the same kind of shit? The end of the earth okay. is upon us. Pretty soon it'll all turn to dust. So get up! The end of the earth is upon us. Forget the past. Pretty Go soon outside, it'll all turn have to a blast. dust. So get Go a up. thousand miles in a jet airplane. Go, Go out of my side. Go insane. Go a thousand miles in a jet airplane. Go out of your mind. Once upon a time in a cruel and harsh city, a raven shark named Corvaron was hatched. From the time he could fly and swim, he wanted to flee from the impending binds of familiarity that the city had imposed upon him. But through the years, he learned to desensitize himself to the soot and slime of the grand illusion, to always question authority and not to trust anyone or anything. It was often difficult to know what he was thinking, because he always wore the same unaffected expression on his face whether or not he was happy or sad, hungry or angry, or heartbroken or confused. But on one particularly confusing day, in the middle of an extremely warm winter, Corvarong's father permanently checked out of the Hotel of Life. And suddenly, everything seemed different. Nothing seemed right or wrong. Nothing. Feeling homeless in his own hometown, Corvarong set out soul-searching across the world, not knowing what would become of himself and not caring. His travels first took him to the land of the original raven sharks, but all of his race were already dead. He then went to the land of the original sunrise, but he found no answers there either. His next destination was chosen by chance, instinct, and with the persuasion of some very strange dreams. 
a place of which he knew little. He decided to stay a while. He decided to stay a while. Got up around 11 a.m. No hangover whatsoever. The rains had stopped, the sun glowing, the wind pushing the clouds by like speeding cars, the hills behind the house shining wet green. I took a short walk while the others still slept. And while I was walking, the wind spoke to me for the first time in a long, long while. It said, everything's going to be all right, and everything will stay all right. That's a nice thing to be told on the bright New Year's morning. And although the wind has been known to lie on occasion, for the moment, I'll choose to remain optimistic. Roach with his beer gut hanging out. Mofo always comes back for more. Nailed him with a nudie mag on the kitchenette floor. But wounded, he escaped under the fridge. And now Tank is back. Back for more crumbs of noodles and drops of beer on the kitchenette floor. Six months in the same room. Same smelly carpet. Same cracked window. Same room blues. Did you ever listen to a bird sing? And understand the words to her song? Ever found a card in the gutter? Ever eaten oysters with peanut butter? Ever found a hundred dollar bill in the street? Then given it to a drunk who desperately needed to have a drink? Ever found a six leaf clover? 
then said a prayer of thanks to both Zeus and Jehovah. Did a white cat ever cross your path? Ever see a shark in the tub when you took a bath? Did you ever listen to a bird sing and understand the words to her song? Ever eaten a flower and become temporarily telepathic? You ever speak to those little purple people who live upstairs in your attic? Ever embrace the tree in the forest? Ever pet a dead cat, already rigor mortis? Ever fallen asleep standing up? Ever commit murder with a green coconut? Ever jump from an airplane without no parachute? Ever went on holiday to a mental institute? Did you ever listen to a bird sing and understand the words to her song? Did you ever listen to a bird sing? Did you ever listen at all? At first panic, and just peace, like a big warm wet mother enveloping her life, then taking it away forever. She died so I could live, her murderer is my savior, her fear is my comfort, her death is my birth. Evolution is a fact that's been proven true. But who provided the first cell that split in two? Who made the grass green, the sky and the sea blue? It's peaceful here in the crater. The birds are trying out the new rhymes they learned last night in the city. But I can no longer hear the babbling brook of machines. I wish I could. It had comforted me in some sick way. The sour flowers are still here. So are the six-leaf clovers. I already feel like I've left hours ago, but when I turn around, I can still see where I've begun. It's the past. It's the past following me, goddammit. Twenty years ago today, twenty years ago today, twenty years ago today you saw the outside world for the first time. Twenty years ago today you saw your mother and father's faces for the first time. Twenty years ago today you began a life full of sorrow and happiness. Twenty years ago today, you began to hear something other than muffled sounds and the sound of your mother's heartbeat. You heard yourself cry for the first time. You heard others cry, too. You heard electronic devices and doors opening and closing, and a lot of voices. Some melodic, others harsh and ugly. You have lost and found so much since that day but to not feel much smarter or wiser than you did then. You feel absolutely childlike. Absolutely childlike, naive, without experience. But ironically, you are completely ready to handle any success or failure the future will bring, both of which you have been avoiding like death itself. No more false expectations. No more lying to yourself. No more waiting for life to begin. No more waiting for things to be perfect. You know they never will be. The struggle itself is an adventure. 
The struggle itself is an adventure. Twenty years ago today, twenty years ago today. Twenty years ago today. Twenty years ago today, you saw the outside world for the first time. Twenty years ago today, you saw your mother and father's faces for the first time. Twenty years ago today, you began a life full of sorrow and happiness. Twenty years ago today, you began to hear something other than muffled sounds and the sound of your mother's heartbeat. You heard yourself cry for the first time. You heard others cry too. You heard electronic devices and doors opening and closing, and a lot of voices. Some melodic, others harsh and ugly.
The raven shark Corvarong had fled from the place he knew and had journeyed as far away from the grand illusion as possible, subjecting himself to a strange, new, and wonderful place, inhabited by strange and wonderful beings. Forever committed he was to solving the mysteries of existence. But one day, years later, as he was walking down the road, just when things seemed perfectly clear for the first time in his life, when finally, after years of quest, he had come to understand the Creator and had himself come into possession of the keys of life, he met his cold blue shadow for the first time. After a cordial, hello, nice to meet you, the shadow began telling Corvarong of another land, the real promised land that lay at the end of the magically colored beams of light that arched across the sky. Where, asked Corvarong? Oh, come on, kid, I'll show you. The shadow took Corvarong to the top of a nearby hill. See over there, just above the horizon. But Corvarong searched the horizon, and there were no colored beams of light arched across the sky. Just the intensity of the life star beating its glare upon the planet. Hey, mister, said Corvarong. I don't see any magic lights. The shadow did not answer. Corvarong turned toward him, but the shadow was not there. Neither were his keys of life or his understanding of the Creator. He'd been robbed of all that he had learned and was again alone without knowledge or friend. I'm all alone in a strange place. I hear nothing, not a single voice. I'm all alone in a strange place. I hear nothing, not a single voice. Here I sit in my room of stone. Here I sit, no electricity, no phone in a land where I am still misunderstood, in a land where I am still misunderstanding. I'm all alone in a strange place. I hear nothing, not a single voice. I am the boy in the land of shadows. I am the boy in the land of shadows. Hello, my friends. Hello, world. 
I said it once before, and I said it with no fear. For most of us here and now, the end is very near. But for regrets, this is neither the time or the place. Better that we go out with a little bit of style and a little bit of grace. Like a climactic ending scene of an epic motion picture, we are all beautiful losers and we are all beautiful sinners. In this global life drama, we are indeed among the last, both planet and inhabitants destined for fatal crash. Better to sing and to shout than to say prayers, because we are not the audience. We are the players! We are the players.